and location, uh, wedding and portrait location strategies. And shooting on location is something that I am really passionate about, as well, of, of, of course, as shooting in the studio. But working on location really gives you an extra layer that you can add to your pictures. So we'll talk a little bit about theory, a little bit about the way that I approach it, and then we'll touch on some gear. So when you're shooting on locations, one of the things that you're going to need, obviously, is a location to work with. And I like to make it fun, and as I travel around, wherever I go, uh, you know, I do a lot of destination work. I also work locally. So I, I always try, try to build my own library and scout different locations wherever I go. And I just I do that by using my cell phone. So I can just take quick camera snaps of various locations wherever I'm at, and one of the nice things is with the new geotagging information that's available, you can use, um, you can pin your photos to different locations using Flickr. Lightroom 4 has got a new mapping feature with auto, which also allows you to um, pin your photos uh, using the geotag information. It's a really, really uh, you know, handy feature to have. And you can also share using Flickr. Um, your different locations with your colleagues and friends or potential clients if you want your clients to say, I'm thinking about doing the shoot in this location. Super easy. You know, you just you know, send them your Flickr link and um, they can see everything that there, that there is and where it's located. So that's a really handy thing. And this way you can kind of look through, brainstorm, go through all your pictures, see what would work, what fits the, what fits the client, what fits the job, that sort of thing. So the right location needs to support the story, and that's, that's the, one of the main the key points uh, when doing um, environmental portraiture. I think that what you really want to do, at least what I want to do, what I look for, are locations that are going to help build and support the story of the person that I'm photographing. Right? So, for example, this uh, senior shot here on the left, this is a girl who was very fashion-y, very, she had kind of a sassy style, and she wanted something, she was actually lived in the country, but she really had a thing for the city, and she really wanted to you know, be photographed in the city and do something very fashionable. So we took her down to San Francisco, found this great alley, and photographed her. And one of the techniques that I like to use, and we'll touch on this in slides moving forward, uh, is backlighting. Um, so it creates a beautiful rim light behind her. It's, it's essentially a, a free light source that you have at your disposal. It creates a lot of drama and mood, and I, I use it all the time, as, as you'll see as we move through the slides, and I, I love doing that. Same thing with this next slide, very, very different kind of image. This was for a spiritual singer, it was a CD cover um, for, her, um, for one of her uh, CDs. And um, again, backlighting. This time we used a big reflector uh, with, with uh, gold over on the right just to pop back in some more light. So again, what you're looking at here are all natural light photographs. And I'm going to take you through from, nat from natural light to using one and several lights, some of them speed lights as well. We'll talk a lot about strobist equipment later on. I know a lot of people use their speed lights, as do I. Uh, and there's a lot going on in that community, and I want to address some of that. It's really important to be able to travel light and use some of the equipment that you may already have. So again, we're in natural light, uh, we're using backlight to really create a beautiful rim light and accentuate our story, and we're choosing locations that are going to help tell the story. Obviously, for the picture of um, Melissa Felipe, the spiritual singer, the, the location in the alley would absolutely not support the message, the story behind uh, what I was trying to create for her CD. It, it would not work. I mean, it's not, there's nothing spiritual about it. So, uh, you know, choosing um, a really a beautiful image from, uh, or location from nature is going to help support that kind of image way better than um, the alley image. So you can see how you know, e the location really is a key player um, in environmental portraiture. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is, is the light. Obviously, we talked about rim light. Open shade is, is one of the next really important things when you're doing location photography. And this is, again, a natural light strategy. You don't need anything. Simple reflector can really help you, even without it. I, this was shot without a reflector, this a shot of the couple laying in the grass from a wedding I did. Um, but what you want to look for is open shade so that you have even lighting. It's, it's almost like having a large softbox because the clouds are filtering that light. They're diffusing that light and giving you beautiful light to work with and not harsh shadows. Here again, the same thing. Now, one of the things is a lot of people uh, will only shoot uh, or they try and book shoots either in the morning or in the, in the evening, right about an hour and a half prior to, prior to sunset or just after sunrise. 
so that they don't get those harsh shadows because when the sun is at the middle position in the sky, you know, you're going to get really harsh shadows. But I'm going to tell you how, to, how, you, you, know, how do you can shoot any time that you want during the day as we, you know, as we move forward through the slides. But um, open shade is what you want, whether you create it using a device like a scrim, which we'll look at, or whether you shoot at different times of day, or whether you just find a, uh, you know, a good building. The side of a building will often cast a large bit of open shade. Anywhere that you can find open shade, you're going to be in good shape, and then you can pop light back in with a reflector, or you can just um, hopefully have good, good, fill, good lighting as it is, which is what these are. I don't think a reflector was used on that one. A reflector certainly wasn't used on this one. Here again, we have backlight creating that beautiful rim light on the subjects. This is all natural light, but I just made sure that my subjects, the front facing the camera, were all in open shade. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the other elements going on. Black and white is one of the things that I like to use a lot. I, you know, I think it's important in any presentation to talk about how you're going to sell your images. Um, and so we created these images with open shade, but what are we going to do to help enhance and support the story that we're trying to tell, the emotion that we're trying to convey with these images? So for the first one, black and white to me is, is a beautiful, timeless way, something that is really going to help um, give clients that feeling, that timeless feeling that's really going to make them want to pull the trigger and purchase. This was purchased very large, this top image. Um, they loved black and white. It's kind of got a silvery quality to it. And uh, I use it all the time as a storytelling element because it just gives that timeless quality to your images. And panoramic crops are another thing that I use all the time. You'll see that both of these are 15 by 30 panoramic crops um, or one to two panoramic crops. They can be printed whatever size you want. These, were, I think, were 15 by 30s or 20 by 40. Um, the top ones, I think, are 20 by 40. The bottom ones are 15, 30. So panoramic crops, what I really like about them is in addition to being having a cinematic quality to them because they are really wide, they also um, they are different. People are not used to seeing them, so they stand out from the crowd. They give you something that everyone's not used to seeing, that they can't really produce themselves. It's not a four by six ratio. It's, you know, it's not a five by seven. It's not an eight by ten. It's not something that they're used to seeing. So that wow factor is a little bit more. It's another one of those mechanisms that you can use to distinguish yourself from an amateur as we're trying to build our businesses and stand out from the crowd. Panoramic crops to me are a great way to do it. My clients absolutely love them. I love them. Um, and they help really um, accentuate certain things like this couple here laying on the ground. They're already in a nice horizontal, thin horizontal line. So having a panoramic crop really helps to accentuate that shape. And the same with the one on top where I've got the couple sort of tucked into the right-hand corner. They are then able to look out to the left, and it gives a lot more room, and it really just accentuates that sort of long rectangular shape. All right, so let's talk more about backlighting. We already touched on the backlighting for the left and right images, but if we look in the center, we've got the same thing. Now, this, this is sort of breaking the rule by not being in open shade, but the subjects, the front of the subjects is, is, in, more, is in shade. So again, I'm really utilizing that backlighting to do what I can. You know, it's going to give me uh, dramatic light. You can use it as a primary light or a secondary light source if you want to pop in light from the front. Or again, using a reflector will do the same thing. So let's take a look at this center image again. This just really helps to bring home the point that what you really want to do is find locations for your clients that help to tell their story, that help to see if I were to photograph these guys in a, in a studio, I could do a fine job with them. But I'd be missing an essential element that really spoke to who they are as people. So these guys came to me and they said, okay, um, uh, you know, we want to book you for our wedding and we're going to do our, our engagement shoot. What, what should we do? So I always tell people, clients, well, let's do something that really is, uh, you know, speaks to you, to your interests, to what is important to you, to what motivates you and, and you're passionate about. So these guys were both environmentalists. They, they moved to King Salmon, Alaska um, after the wedding, but they're big environmental people. And they live here in my town in Petaluma, and they knew this great park. So we, they suggested, why don't we go and shoot there? We, we hike there all the time, and we love it. So I said, sure, that's great. And I had never been there before. And that's another thing I want to talk to you about is, um, you know, it's great to go to locations that you use all the time, but it's also really fun to just do something, that, go, go someplace that you've never been before, 
because all of a sudden it's like magic and you're, you're wide-eyed. It's like eye candy for you and all sorts of great things happen. So I had never been here before and you could be really scared about that. Oh my God, I've never been there. I don't know what am I going to do. Maybe I'm not going to find a good location. But the other way to look at it is like have fun. Go there, enjoy yourself. You know, use it as a game, as a mental game to you know, really ratchet up your creativity. So we hiked up this huge mountain and we got to the top, and it sure paid off because this is just a, a gorgeous spot. In fact, I went back to shoot the image of the spiritual singer there uh, about a month later. So, you know, great way to um, really help tell the story of your clients is, again, finding those spots that really help tell their story. And, again, another way to use backlighting if you're in a church situation. And I, what I wanted to do is just show you that, there, the, you know, you really don't need any additional lighting equipment other than the sun. You can do a lot with the sun. Now, certainly, if you, ha you have flashes and you have reflectors, that's great. I, I encourage you to use them, and I use them all the time. But I want to show you that there are so many things that you can do just with natural light. And, and so you saw what we did with um, backlighting before. Here's another way to use backlighting to create beautiful, dramatic silhouettes. Silhouettes are great. Anytime you have a bright background and you put your subjects in front of it, you can expose it for a silhouette. It's really simple. Okay, so the way I like to think of my locations is like movie sets or stage sets. I really want them to build that story. Again, I'm going to go back to this over and over again because I think it's such an important point. So here, uh, an actor friend of mine needed some promotional shots and he's a really edgy guy, and he wanted really edgy, you know, uh, stuff that looked like movie stills, images that looked like movie stills. So we found this great old mill, and we borrowed a buddy's Mercedes, and we staged this shot. And I'll show you how I lit this. So what I did is I used two strip banks. One on the, um, one on the left is uh, vertically oriented. One on the right is horizontally oriented. Uh, these are Photoflex strip boxes with a Triton flash I was using at the time. And also, a, um, I think this is a five or seven foot octobank, uh, or they called it an octodome. It was a Photoflex octodome. Uh, and that's it. Uh, and that created a really beautiful soft light. And then I had some the nice um, strip banks are giving me an edgy rim light on the sides, so it gives it that extra kick. They're also called kickers, and, and for that reason, because it gives you a nice punch and a nice kick. So again, you, know, you want your lighting to match the location, the props to match the location, the location, but ultimately all of that stuff is supporting your subject, okay, because that's the most important thing is, is their story being told the right way? Are people, you know, what I want in an, in an environmental portrait is I want people to, to when, they, when they, after they look at that portrait, I want them to know something else about the subject, something they didn't know before they looked at the, at the portrait. I want them to, um, I want portraits to reveal something about the person, to tell a story about the person, something that, that, they, you know, that the person who look at, who's looking at it didn't really know before. You know, an extra, it just adds some complexity, adds, adds a, a different layer of information to that person. Okay, here again, location. It's just like the realtors say, location, location, location. This is a really edgy family portrait that I did of, of these, um, my good friend Dennis Robistando and his, and his kids. Uh, they're, very, uh, into, they're very into fitness, they're very into rap and pop music, um, and they're real tough characters and, and you know, really fun and edgy. So we wanted to find a location that would really work for them and help support that story and tell that story. Um, and again, we're, I'm using some staggered posing here, which I'll talk about a little bit later. I think that... Um, you know, posing can kind of have, have a little bit of a bad name, and we'll, we'll touch up on that later. But you, if you look at the best posing that's being done, if you look at fashion magazines and you look at advertising and you look at movie posters, all of it is posed, and it's all done beautifully well. So posing doesn't have to be stiff and stale. It can be really cool and what I like to call editorial, okay? And we'll touch on some of the mechanisms that I use to do that a little bit later. But this is a good example of it. I think we come back to this image later when I talk about that as well. Again, a background that's going to fit this was to go a rap-inspired image, uh, kind of with a, a rap album cover in mind or a magazine cover. So uh, also the post-processing is playing into, into the image here, the kind of wardrobe, the expressions, the posing, all of it. Uh, and, you know, the right background, a cinder block wall with a nice tag on it. Uh, that's going to help really tell that story. Now, obviously, if we were to put the spiritual singer here again to use that example, it's not going to work. So really find relevant backgrounds to support the story that you're trying to sell or create. 
Um, here again, uh, promotional image for uh, Wendy and Byron Rowe, photography colleagues of mine, and they wanted an image that was going to tell the story of how Byron is the lead photographer, uh, and Wendy is the support plays a supporting role. They're also very fashionable. Uh, they're very contemporary. Um, and stylish, and they wanted an image that was really going to talk about that. So the brick wall seemed like the perfect thing for that. Uh, putting her behind him, uh, holding him, so he's kind of protecting her, uh, you know, being the dominant male, um, and having people not be so camera aware, I think it's also important. Or one person camera aware and one not. So Byron is looking off and to the right. Um, it creates drama and mood and difference. Uh, also, I used a ring light in this image. Uh, which is which creates a really uh, fashionable kind of edgy light. You see it used a lot in fashion. One of my favorite light sources. I used a pro photo ring light for this, but I recently had a chance to work with um, Expo Imaging's um, Ray Flash in the studio, and it was really I was really pleased. It was really amazing. So if you get a chance to check out that piece of kit, do it. It's really pretty cool. Um, and I was amazed because the ring flash, the pro photo ring flash is very expensive and um, the ray flash is, you know, a couple hundred bucks. So I was really, really amazed at what it can do. All right, here again, you know, finding a location that's going to help tell the story, that's going to help create a cool editorial kind of image, which is what Eric needed, which is what my client here needed to create for his acting career. So. One technique I want to talk about is using backlighting in this, where you're not putting the backlight at the subject, but you're putting it at a back wall, where you're, you're finding a surface that's going to really be benefited by having light on it. So what I did is I pointed uh, a Triton flash at the back wall,